a question that is a lot of times is a little bit controversial, but what, what happens to a person who commits suicide? If they're a believer and they take their own life and um, maybe they were dealing with medical issues or mental issues and they take their own life and not that this should serve as an encouragement or anything, but in, you, in your thoughts, what do you think happens to a person who's a Bible believing, a believer and confess Jesus as Lord, served God, and then took their own life. Will they go to, I mean, I know that God d decides the final judgment, but the last state or the last act that they committed, you know, was an act of sin. Does that forfeit their salvation or do they still can go potentially to heaven? Certainly, potentially, they, they can. L let me explain why, in my understanding. We make a mistake when we just assume they're in heaven. Okay. We make a mistake when we just assume they're lost. Either way, it's a mistake to be dogmatic uh, and, and to speak in a categorical way. Okay. But no, number one, I know you could argue that no murderer has eternal life and mm -hmm. that the last act that they did was murder and they, they, can't, they can't repent of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know for sure that many people doing it are not in their right mind. Mm -hmm. Many, you know, maybe it's someone dealing with PTSD and they literally think that they're about to be captured by the enemy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And better to be better to take their life than be tortured by the enemy. Mm -hmm. What God's going to say? Oh, oh, you did it! You crossed that line. You mm. you did it. Or, you know, it could be drug flashbacks, or just who knows? The physical pain is so acute they literally can't take another minute, and mm -hmm. that's looking for relief. So God, I look at the character of God expressed to us through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the character of God expressed to me for almost 52 years as a believer, which mm -hmm. is incredibly long-suffering and merciful mm -hmm. and compassionate. It's like, oh, you just, you were so good for 99 years, and you know, one little time. The other thing is, I understand the theology saying, well, it's self-murder and, and you didn't get to repent. But does the Bible say that just committing one sin causes you to forfeit your salvation? For example, what if you're driving in your car Somebody cuts you off, and you get fury. You you lose it. You start laying on your horn and using mm -hmm. profanity and cursing you, idiot, you jerk. And then you get so angry, you swerve, and you you hit a truck and you die accidentally. Well, you didn't get you died in an unrepentant state. Does that damn you? Well, no. That's that. Where do we get that theology? That only if you die in a repentant state, only if you die having just confessed your sin, uh, do do you make it? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we don't know. It could be that a person in rebellion against God said, I, I want out. Mm -hmm. I, I do not want to face the consequences of what I've done. I mean, I remember one, one brother, a ministry leader, uh, very respected, very respected ministry was, was uh, found out that he had, you know, raped a girl. And, you know, I, I don't know, I, shocked, I, I knew him some, I was absolutely shocked to hear it when he took his own life. well, it was just the grief, the pain, the shame, couldn't live with it any any longer, and he took his life. Was it that he never repented, and this was the final act of rebellion? God knows. Mm. God knows. But for sure, we can't have this theology that just because someone committed suicide that they must therefore be lost forever. I, I think that's cruel, and, and I think it's misunderstanding the nature of God mm -hmm. uh, in, in the process. And plus, only God knows what happened. It could also be that someone decides to do something, sets sets things in motion, you know, overdoses on sleeping pills, mm -hmm. and as they're starting to pass out, says, oh, God, I'm so sorry, have mercy. And mm -hmm. they actually did die crying out for mercy. Mm -hmm. So let God so be true. the judge. Don't just, when, uh, uh, there was a pastor's wife, and she was talking about her husband lived with so much torment, and he took his life, and she was just so sure he was with the Lord now, and putting mm -hmm. it forward so strongly, that concerns me mm. because people would think, okay, good, I, I can just do that too, and I just go to, get to go to heaven quicker. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. That's Suicide so is a sin against God, That's and we're true. taking something that doesn't belong to us. It belongs to Him. Mm -hmm. But there are people, they've lost a loved one to suicide, and they the person, be, as far as I know, is a believer. Don't beat yourself up thinking that they're definitely lost. God knows, and perhaps you'll, you'll get to be with Him forever. Mm -hmm. How can we as Christians avoid the pitfalls of hyper grace while embracing God's grace fully? Yeah, so I think first, with so many people living condemned and, and conflicted lives, that we really 
bathe ourselves in the love of the Father. Mm. We really look at the cross and realize our righteousness comes from there, or our standing with God comes from there. And this was not a one-time act of God. God's charis, his grace, is something ongoing in our lives. It is, it is not just forgiveness, it's empowerment mm -hmm. uh, to, to live above sin. Mm -hmm. And we, we dive into that ocean and we swim in it and we, we bask in it and, and, and we learn to feel safe in it. You know, it's like a kid riding a bike when dad lets go and you're doing great. <laughs> they fall over because dad's not there, you know, mm -hmm. well, that, now you get used to it. You can, you can, so there's this sense of trust, like free fall into God's grace until it's so real to you. Now don't play games with this. That's good. This is something very sacred. If you mess up, God understands, come running back. He's quick to forgive. He's merciful, but don't play games with this because better people than you have destroyed their lives. And better people than you have destroyed their ministries and better people than you have, have brought reproach to the name of the Lord. And some say, well, I, I can't live like that. Well, then you, you haven't really gotten the first part about the love, the mercy, mm -hmm. the security we have in him. So take that deep dive, meditate on all the favorite verses of the one saved, always saved folks, because that's the Bible. Mm -hmm. No one can snatch you out of his hand. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. He's the author and finisher of faith. He who began the good work, he will bring it to completion. Revel in that. Mm -hmm. And now, now from there, recognize he's a holy God and, and we belong to him. Don't, don't play games. This is an amazing gift you've been given at a very high price. Don't play games with it. Where you fall short, he's quick to forgive. But don't play games. Don't think that you can sin and get away with it, or you can rebel and get away with it. Because in that sense, unrepentant sin, nobody gets away with it.